Hey, happy 2020 and welcome to Righteously Redeemed. <laughs> so I'm so excited because I started this channel a year ago. Crazy. And um, one of my goals for the channel was just to be able to post, um, record, share uh, a message once a month. And uh, I was able to accomplish that. So I'm super, super um, proud of that accomplishment. Um, something I haven't done, and I know it sounds silly, but everybody has fears. We all do. But I think that there is um, freedom in being able to identify your fear and then just face it head on. So believe it or not, one of my fears is um, sharing more about me through uh, this YouTube channel because it's the internet, right? So um, <laughs> I just pray and hope that this year through Righteously Redeemed, I can share um, just more about how the Lord truly has redeemed me. Um, he is a righteous, perfect father. And um, in his eyes, he sees me pure and blameless. And um, that's hard for me to see. That's hard for me to um, put his lens on and see me like that. Um, people, lots of us are our worst critics. We're, our, um, we're the hardest on ourselves. And I realized that, you know, when the Lord tells us to love the Lord with all of our heart, to love him first, to love him the most, and then to love others like we love ourselves, I get caught on that one. Because something I've learned and recognized is um, to love others to love yourself means you have to love yourself so much to be able to love others so well. And I think, this is just from my own walk of 30 years of living, um, to be able to love others and not love yourself doesn't go together. So um, this year, truly recognizing that I love to help, I love to be there for people, but I've also put myself in the back seat a lot. And I don't think there's anything wrong with having a servant heart, um, wanting to help others, but there does come a point where you can only lead as strong as you are. And if you are not strong in yourself, if you don't have your own home, in check if you don't have your own ducks in a row how can you lead or even um, fully help others to the fullest capacity if that makes sense so one of my goals this year is to really make sure that everything I'm able to do in my own strength for my home for my finances for my health uh, mental, physical, everything is just in order and that I have my priorities set uh, so that I do have the energy, I have the capacity, I have the um, withal to pour into other people from a full, full cup because I know that I love myself so much that I can give myself grace, I can forgive myself when I mess up so that I can then also love and forgive and pour out so much grace and abundance for other people um, because I want to be able to, it says, love your neighbor as yourself. And I want to make sure that I'm loving myself really well too. So <laughs> that's kind of a little bit of my heart, the background on where this next year is going to lead with uh, the messages I share, still very, very closely related to the Bible. Everything will come from the word of God um, and just how the Lord has truly continues to redeem me. And um, he's redeeming you. You have been redeemed. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the process begins and um, his mercies are new every single day. And that's just the goodness of who he is. He loves us. 
He forgives us consistently and because of his grace and because of his forgiveness, we can accept it, forgive ourselves, and then forgive and love others really well through God's love. It's no easy task. Um, but that's what we're here for. And that's this whole part of the journey is being able to accept his love and to share it with others. So, um, before I share some Bible, I want to pray for your 2022. So, um, heavenly father, I just thank you so much for the person listening to this message. Father God, I just thank you that you've given me the opportunity to even just minister and just share your word to them. Lord, I pray that everything I do share is of you, that it's encouraging, that it's uplifting, that it's just fruit. Um, it's fruitful and it's just nourishment to their bodies. Father God, it's just um, so that they don't keep it to themselves. They, they are stirred on to share with somebody else. Father, I thank you for all that you've given me in my life. I thank you that you're such a good father and that you've never let me down and you'll never let the person listening down. Through 2022, no matter what comes our way, you are in control you know what's coming and because we know you and we trust you we know that it'll all be good and it'll all be great this is not our forever home but until you do call us we can glorify in who you are we love you jesus amen okay so 2022 everybody not everybody i shouldn't say that um lots of people pick a word of the year and a few years ago, mine was moisturize. I know. So I was like getting older. I was like, oh my gosh, my face, wrinkles, my forehead, all the things. And I was like, moisturize. Um, I love lotions. And there's like this really night, good night cream that I use. Uh, if you're interested, I can tell you about it. <laughs> but it's so good. And just moisturizing my body. That was a few years ago. Um, and this year, I don't think I really did one for last year. Probably just survive. <laughs> Let's be real. Um, survive and thrive and be thankful. Uh, this year is discipline. Discipline. And to speak over myself that I am a disciplined person. And that covers a multitude of things. Disciplined as in small things to big things. And the verse that like kept coming to my mind, it's in Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to read just one verse and then I actually want to read the entire section to you and you can follow along. But uh, the verse, the key verse for discipline for this year, uh, for myself, where the Lord has been leading me and I hope that the Lord can kind of give you a verse and just kind of guide you on where you need to go, where he wants you to just get stronger and better uh, for him because he's using you. You're his. When you decide to be a Christ follower, you surrender your life. You surrender your will, your desires, and you say, Lord, have your way. And that is challenging. But it's also kind of like freeing too because then you know, okay, Lord, if I'm seeking you in everything, if I've asked for your guidance, I know that he honors that. He loves when we come to him and we ask him, what do you want me to do? The fact that we're seeking him is the sweetness for him. Um, so it's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. And it says, no, this is the NLT version, the New Living Translation. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But Afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. Mm. I really like that. Uh, verse 12 and 13 say, So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall, but become strong. I love that part. Verse 13 says, mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall, but become strong. And earlier in the verses, it just talks about how Jesus Christ going to the cross and what he went through and how he was disciplined. 
you know, he didn't back out. He didn't give up. It was hard. It was challenging. But praise the Lord that Jesus didn't get up, that he that didn't he did not give up, that he was disciplined. He was disciplined with what he knew he was called to do. So uh, the whole section, Hebrews 12, says God's discipline proves his love. This is the NLT version. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates our and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not given your lives in your struggle against sin. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord's discipline, for the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who is never pleased, who is never disciplined by its father. If God didn't, doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not ready, are not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us, so that we might share in his holiness. So, that was a lot. And I think it is so deep and so powerful. So I've taken the word disciplined and it really just identified in my life things that are challenging, that are hard. Um, waking up in the morning and being disciplined to get up, to work out, making my bed every morning. That's a discipline. I'm a disciplined person. Uh, putting my clothes away right after they're in the dryer. You know, washer to dryer is easy. It's the easy part. It's the dryer to the closet. It's the hanging them up. Um, I don't know why that's so challenging. I mean, my goodness, some people probably love doing that. And I haven't have found a love for it yet. So some of the things I've liked to do is put on a praise and worship song when I'm doing the laundry. Sometimes I kind of like to time myself to see like kind of a competition. How fast can I do it? How fast can I put them away? Uh, um, these are just little things, but they make big impacts, uh, huge impacts in our lives. And I just want to encourage you, if there's something you want to start doing, just tell yourself, I'm a disciplined person. I can do this. You know, you kind of put off, oh, I'm going to put, car what is it, gas in my car tomorrow morning. No, you're disciplined. Go do it right now. Just do it. You're disciplined. I'm a disciplined person. I can do this right now. If I have the time, if I have the energy, if I have the ability, I'm doing it right now. Even if you don't have the energy, my goodness, our bodies are naturally lazy. Our bodies naturally want to sit on the couch, stay in our beds, sleep, eat junk food, but we're disciplined. You say, hey, I already had one cookie. I'm disciplined. That's enough sweets for today. I'm disciplined. I can drink three cups of water or however many much water you need to drink each day. I'm disciplined. I will put my items back where they belong. I'm disciplined. I will put my shoes back in the closet. I'm disciplined. I will fold the socks and make the matches. I'm disciplined. You know, I will clean my car. I will take it to get car washed. I'm disciplined. I will pick up the trash and you know, help somebody. Ah, did you hear that? Being able to be disciplined in your life will then translate to being able to help others. When you are so disciplined to doing things and you have your routine set, that makes room to be able to help and support other people. I think a lot of us can get so weary and 
just tired because we don't even want to help ourselves. So how do you have enough energy to help somebody else? Work on getting your things together. Get your life in order. One thing I'm learning as well is a lot of us will, I've seen this and I've heard it before. Oh, we're going to get our house clean. We have people coming over. Huh. Why don't you just have your house cleaned for you? Why do we dress up and put more effort in for other people than we will for ourselves? Just think about that. If somebody doesn't see it, does that mean you don't do it? Do you only do it if people will see it? It's part of your character. Are you a disciplined person? Do you make your bed only if somebody's coming over? Do you vacuum only because you have guests coming to your home? Do you tidy up because people are coming? I think that we do more things for a show than we do just to know that we can do them for yourself. Do it for your enjoyment. One of my girlfriends, she said she likes to keep her house tidy and neat because what if Jesus were to come over? She never wants to have to have a home that's messy um, for, for a king. I thought that was kind of a sweet thought to be able to know if Jesus were to stop by would, I, would my house be presentable? If Jesus were to see me with what I'm wearing, is he going to be pleased with me? He's with me every day, right? But sometimes I think we, we try to dress ourselves up more to please other people, but it's like, Jesus wants you. Are you presenting your best self every single day? If you're not, I encourage you, be disciplined. Yes, it's painful. Yes, it's agonizing sometimes. Yes, it's tiresome. But get yourself a routine. Figure out two, three things you want to start implementing. Become disciplined in them. Get really good at them because then guess what? You'll be able to help somebody else. Once you master something, you should share it with other people. It's your gifting. And we're called to stir one another on to help each other. So 2022, work on you. <laughs> Seriously, that's my encouragement. 2022, work on you. Focus on what you need to do the, be, to be the very best you. Not to please other people, not to put on a show, but so that you know that like, oh, I love my life. My life is great. Regardless of what anybody sees or knows or tells me, you're pleased with it. You're pleased with yourself. You are joyful in who you are because God created you. So start loving your life. And if you don't change it, you have that ability. Nobody has to wait to come around for you to make it better. It's up to you. So in 2022, become the best you. There's only one of you. So, something else I like to do, and I don't always do this. Um, it's actually my first year to do a journal. I have lots of journals, so that's not what I'm saying. I don't always do a, tons of journals. I love journals. Um, but usually I make a vision board, and I'll just show you a little snippet. This is my first page, and it says, I love my life. I really liked this girl. And um, I just wrote some affirmations. I am blessed, I am loved, I am needed, I am healthy, I am safe, I am his. Um, and then I have on the next page, I have I am beautiful. Uh, just to be able to speak these loving words, I am God's creation. He sees me beautiful regardless of if I have lots of makeup on, my natural curly hair or not. Like God sees me beautiful, I am perfect. I don't need to dress up for anybody um, my natural self is perfect for him. And anything else is just extra, right? 
Um, and I, and I love makeup and doing my nails and hair and all that great stuff, but I also need to be confident and, sh and secure in just my natural beauty and naturally who I am and who God sees me to be. Um, <laughs> I love that, right? And then the next one, self-care, just truly taking care of yourself, of myself, knowing that I can only pour out of a healthy me. And if I'm not healthy, people are not going to get a healthy dose of me. It's not going to be good for them. And I want to make sure that what I pour out to others is um, fruitful and tasty and good and um, just sweet. And if I'm bitter and ugly and mean, nobody wants to taste that. Nobody wants to be around that. So that's my encouragement. <laughs> And um, I just know that 2022 is going to be a year that you can choose to become um, the very best you. So, yes, discipline is my word of the year. I'm a disciplined person. And whatever it is that the Lord puts on your heart to do or be or work on this year, I encourage you and I know that you can do it. All right, guys. Until next time. Bye.